Hayes, 3330 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie. As good as it gets in here, it's always Friday. Great lunch specials, the salads are great, the burgers are outstanding. You get two for $6.99, two for $8.99. It doesn't come any better for lunch. And the dinner's great too, with steaks and more at TGI Fridays. And a pleasant good evening to you. Ken Trahan for Sports Nola TV from SportsNola.com at TGI Fridays in Metairie. So glad you've joined us here this evening as we talk about yet another exciting week and weekend of football. And of course, we'll talk about high school football, college football, pro football, and we'll do it with three gentlemen who know the game very well. First and foremost, my friend Torrin Small, former New Orleans Saints wide receiver, NFL receiver of 10 years. Good evening, my friend. How we doing, Ken, and how we doing out there? Hey, sad day, more football. Plenty of football left in this season. That's it. He's got That's it. very little to say. That's it. Isn't it's not that much unusual? To say. It's not much to and say. And the guy today. that will take his time since he didn't use it all, from SportsNola.com, <laughs> Ryder Par Excellence, Brian Alley Walsh. The floor is yours, Brian. Ken, thanks. It's always a pleasure to be here. I know we're going to dissect the Saints till, till we're blue in the gums, but I just want to again throw kudos at Curtis Johnson and the Tulane Green Wave, five and two, and like we said last week, dare we say bowl? <laughs> yes. Great to play. Yes, you may. It's not <laughs> a dare anymore. <laughs> it's a virtual guarantee. <laughs> but it's all good, so you can say it and say it again if you'd like. Bowl. And of course, Pro Football Hall of Famer, former New Orleans Saints great, Saints Hall of Famer, every Hall of Fame you can come up with. He's in our Hall of Fame, because we love him, Ricky Jackson. Ricky? I'll tell you what, I'm glad the Raiders got on to Lane Bandwagon. So, I mean, I've been trying to get him to get on to Lane Bandwagon the whole while. So, it's great to see Tulane win. Great to see that they bowl potential already almost. You know, a couple more wins. Man, who knows? They might be playing Alabama one day. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a little bit ambitious. And what about what about some love for your LSU Tigers? They took it. LSU Tigers took it to your homeboys, didn't they? Yeah, I tell you what, they took it to Florida. And I tell you, uh, yeah. I, I thought Florida had a chance, but LSU just overpowered. Yeah. All right, so LSU, Tulane, the Saints. We got high school football to tell you about as well, and some highlights. All of that forthcoming, and when we return, highlights of the Saints and the Patriots as Sports Nola TV continues from TGI Fridays, 3330 Veterans Memorial Boulevard in Metairie on WHNO Channel 20. have a way of doing that to opposing teams. Ask Peyton Manning. He knows all about that from many encounters over the years. It's Sports Nola TV from TGI Fridays, 3330 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie. Okay, so the Saints are 5-1. and one. And In retrospect, if you'd have told me they would split the two road games going to Chicago and New England, I'd say, good job. And you're in great shape as a result. And they are heading into the bye week. But what troubles you is how it got to this. And obviously, this was a game that was there for the Saints to win, and they did not do so. Brian, despite the fact that Drew Brees at a subpar game was not good at all in this game, despite the fact that their defense wasn't as good as they should have been, despite the fact that the Patriots dropped the ball the entire game, uh, it was there for them. They simply didn't take advantage of it. Yeah, and that's why I agree, Kenny. You know, that's why I think just beating Chicago up at Soldier Field was very important because you kind of knew that this was going to be the game that we saw would go down to a, a, perhaps the last minute, last play. New England is a very good club, and they're even a better club at home. They've got a record through the month of October at home since 06. You know, that's a tough team to beat at their place. But the Saints should have had it, would have had it, could have, would have, should have. That's all you want to say at this point, Kenny, you know? Well, when you watch the game and you see missed opportunities, you start to wonder if they're going to catch up with you, Torrance, and that's what happened here when you have Darren Sproles wide open down the sideline for what would have been an easy touchdown and miss him, when you have Nick Toon wide open in the flat at the goal line and miss him badly. Uh, those are points you don't get back. Yes. In, in a game like this, you've got to take advantage of every opportunity because good teams will capitalize and will respond to those mistakes that you make. 
Now, New England, they made some mistakes as well. They had a lot of drops. They had, we didn't take advantage of it. And we consider ourselves a good team. But when we messed up, they jumped on it, they stomped us, and they took advantage of those uh, mistakes that we made and capitalized. Ricky, you play defense, and nobody takes players out of the game better than New England does over the years. Belichick's done it time after time. Jimmy Graham, no catches. First time that happened in 44 games. Marcus Colston, one catch. First time that happened since 2011. What did New England do to take these guys out of the game so effectively? I mean, they concentrated on the two guys, but, you know, we have so many more guys open that we could have got the ball to. And just like Terrence was saying, you know, guys are wide open. We just didn't get the ball to them. But I'll tell you one thing. That was a home field game, you know what I mean? Anytime you're playing in New England, they last they record something like 28 and one or 23 and one, you know, at, at home. So it's hard to beat those guys at home. And look like to me, you know, rough reach kind of helped them a little bit, you know. So that's the way I looked at the game. I looked at the holding call that they should have had. They didn't call that. It's two or three times that it looked like the guy dropped the ball. They didn't call that. So rough reach was on the home team side. Brian, as you look at the Saints wide receivers, are you concerned at all? Kenny Stills is stepping up, three catches, had the touchdown. Nick Tune had one catch. Of course, he would have had another for a touchdown if Breeze puts the ball on him. But Colson with one catch. Robert Meacham's invisible. He hasn't contributed anything basically other than one touchdown earlier this year. Lance Moore's hurt. Are you starting to worry a little bit about their wide receivers? Absolutely. Now, the, the good thing is Kenny Aqib Talib, there's not many guys like him in the NFL. If another cornerback like him but you're right you, you, you worry about stills you worry about tune where have Marcus Colson been we know where Lance Moore is on the shelf right now Robert Meacham you've got three receivers and only one really produced a catch and that was Marcus Colson you, you know teams are going to figure out ways to to take Jimmy Graham out of a game and if they can be <coughs> successful effective some this is a copycat league and these guys know other teams are going to do that. Now, they may not have a Tlaib, but there's other ways you can take Jimmy Graham out of a game. Well, Graham, by the way, apparently having an MRI on his yeah. foot. So stay tuned where that's concerned. Yeah. Aaron Sproles got nailed late in the game. Breeze let him right into a defender and got cracked and knocked out. And that really hurt the Saints late in the game, too. When you take Graham and Sproles away, Torrance, you've taken away their two biggest weapons easily. Yes. They, now, they took away those guys. But understand, we still had opportunity to win this game. We still moved the ball. We still balanced out with them for his total yards um, in the game. That is one thing that did step up that we've been struggling with all year was the run game. The run game did step up. The three-headed monsters they had out there did a great job. They also stepped up as catching the ball as well as the, the, the running backs. A lot of balls went to the running backs in this game. If, if those things, they're going to take away your, your deep threat, they're going to take away those big play guys, then we have to nickel and dive. You're going to have to win games like this. It's going to be something like this, and we have to win. We had opportunity. We didn't. Hopefully they'll come back after sitting on this for two weeks and come back and play better. Ricky, did they not run the ball enough? It seems to me that with the way they were taking away these guys outside and with Wilfork being out and their ability to gash this team, which they did, Inside, did the Saints not run the ball enough in this game? Well, I mean, I think they ran the ball enough. I like the game plan the Saints had. Uh, the game plan wasn't a problem for us. I mean, a couple of uh, balls just didn't get to where they should have got to, but the game plan wasn't a problem. And I think the defense, uh, defense line still, you know, they're doing a great job with the pass rush. Then the Saints got a chance to get in the pass rush on the blitz and stuff. So the Saints had the ball game. They just let it slip at the end. Well, this was another in the saga of painful last second touchdowns that have plagued the Saints over an extended period of time. Of course, the one yesterday, go back to the one that we all remember in the playoffs in 2011. Alex Smith passed to Vernon Davis. We know all about that. Remember the winless Browns uh, beating Mike Ditka's Saints. Oh, goodness gracious, Tim Couch. Uh, the Buccaneers in 07 with Luke McCown pass with 14 seconds left. Shane Matthews, really? in 1999 for the Bears against Ditka, kind of sealing his fate. Everybody's got these in their history, Brian. The Saints just have some that are pretty notable in the last seconds. Yeah, and what makes this more painful, I think, is, is that, you know, for 59 minutes and 55 seconds, this club is going to be 6-0. and They're going to go into a bye week, and they're sitting pretty in the NFC. And then the Hail Mary drops from, mm -hmm. from above. And suddenly, uh, you know, the sky, is, the sky hasn't opened up. The world isn't come to an end. It could be a heck of a lot worse. And all you got to think back is two years ago, this could have been the end of a season, and it's not. They still have 10 games to go, and this is a very good football team. And hopefully they'll learn from this mistake. But, but not, 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 not only that, 
this this is it wasn't a conference game, which is a good thing. And right now, we're in the second quarter. We're one and one in the second quarter. There's still a lot of football left. No need to panic. Hey, take this one, soak it up. You got two weeks and move forward. Well, I'll tell you what, man. The Saints are in a great position. I mean, everybody else so far behind them. All we got to do is maintain what we're doing. Won another five games and lose one, and, and we're right where we want to be at. Yep, the reality is they lost this one, but they won two just like it earlier against the Falcons and the Bucks. So they're really two and one in these kind of situations. When we return, we'll take a trip around the NFL as Sports NOLA TV continues from TGI Fridays in Metairie on WHNO Channel 20. Com trivia question of the evening concerns Drew Brees. And it's a good one. I'll let you ponder it and figure it out. When Drew Brees quarterbacked at New England this past Sunday, he has now done so in 30 of the 31 NFL stadiums. The question, what is the only NFL city the Saints have not played in since Brees arrived in 2006? Only one. Which one is it? Think about it. Come back with an answer later in the show, and let's see how wise you are. Ken Trahan, Sports Noah TV, continues from TGI Fridays. Well, the NFL weekend was another weekend of great interest, which left only two unbeaten teams remaining in the league, and they happen to reside in the same division. Let's take a look at results from this past weekend. Of course, the Thursday night affair with the Bears rebounding after their loss to the Saints to beat the Giants and Green Bay took care of Baltimore good win for the Packers on the road thriller Cincinnati in overtime over Buffalo the Bengals are a threat Detroit solid win over Cleveland Brandon Whedon a forgetful throw in that game How about St. Louis just burying Houston at Houston and the Boo Birds out for an injured quarterback which stinks Kansas City unbeaten took care of Oakland 24-7 most improved team in the league playing a week schedule. Carolina went to Minnesota and destroyed the Vikings. Ominous sign for the Saints there. Pittsburgh got a win. They beat the Jets 19 to six. Elsewhere, Philadelphia got a great effort from Nick Foles. Kept Tampa Bay winless. Who's the quarterback of the Eagles moving forward? Denver, ho-hum. They really had a letdown, but they still won by 16 over hapless Jacksonville. Seattle, Saints fans, bad news. They beat Tennessee 20 to 13. And more bad news, Saints fans, San Francisco beat Arizona 32-20. Dallas rebounds with a 31-16 victory over Washington. The Monday night game is Indianapolis at San Diego. Interesting results from an interesting weekend in the National Football League. Brian, what got your attention from this past weekend? Normally there's several, but there's only one game in my mind, and that's St. Louis's blowout of the, of the Texans at Reliance Stadium. And not only did they dismantle the Texans, uh, the, the Rams did, but it was the way in which they did it. They had touchdowns scored by the offense, defense, and special teams. But I want to refer to one play, Kenny alluded to it, and it's just a travesty that the Texan fans, home fans, would boo when, when Matt Schaub suffered an ankle injury and had to be assisted off the field. And teams from, players from both sides responded to that. And you know what? You should be ashamed of yourself. It does make me think, Kenny, back in the mid-90s when Saints fans booed when Wade Wilson went down or with an cheered, injury. Or cheered, not booed, but yeah, cheered. I'm, yeah. Cheered, I'm sorry, right. excuse me. And, and Jim Moore re referred to it as, he referred to the fans as sick, sick, sick. You know what? You spend a lot of money to pay for tickets and everything like that, but you, that does not give you the right to cheer for an injured player, particularly your own. Mm, nice. Very nice put. Very well put. The game that I, I was shocked about, Denver and Jacksonville. I thought it'd be more of a blowout. <laughs> had an opportunity to watch this game, and I, I, I Denver jumped out. They had, they had a, a spread of 28 points. Then it went down to 26. But Jacksonville came out and played much better than, than expected. Uh, I, I was shocked by that. They even um, stopped Peyton a couple times. Um, picked him off. He threw another interception, which I thought was surprising. Wasn't very much excitement in the NFL this week, but um, that was a shocker to me. Ricky? I'll tell you what I like, uh, seeing Dallas come back. I mean, last week they had a, a burner against Denver and they lost it at the end. But they came right back this week and showed a, a sturdy performance. And I mean, you know, even looking at Carolina, those two teams this week, they showed me that 
they up and down, but they can score a lot of points and got good defense. Well, to me, it was Carolina. I mean, this is a team that when they hit on all cylinders, they're pretty dangerous. They can play some defense. They can run the ball. When Cam Newton plays well as he did this past week, they're a dangerous team. They went into Minnesota and dismantled the Vikings. The Vikings are in disarray. They went and picked up Josh Freeman. Nobody knows who their quarterback is. Of course, Adrian Peterson had a tragedy losing his two-year-old son, which was a major distraction. But the Vikings are a total mess. Carolina took advantage of it. And the Saints have to be very cognizant of what this team is capable of doing moving forward. Let's take a look at the NFC South standings as a result of this past weekend's action. The Saints are still in total control of the division by three over the Panthers, by four over the Falcons, and of course by five over Tampa Bay. So, Brian, as you look at that, will it be Carolina or will it be Atlanta that threatens to maybe be a 500 team or make the playoffs? Kenny, I'm with you on Carolina. I think they're a sleeping giant, and if, if, they, if they discover how to, to uh, play good offense on a consistent basis, and that starts with Cam Newton, they're a team to be reckoned with. I'm not saying they're going to overtake the Saints in the division, but they're a team that could give them problems when they meet twice later in the season. Yes, I, I, I also think Carolina. you got to understand, Carolina at the end of last year, I think they turned in five of the last six games they won. They picked it up, and, and their defense, have a great defense. Anytime you have a pretty good defense, you give yourself an opportunity to win ball games. You kind of wonder about Atlanta, Ricky. You, you have a team that lost Julio Jones now, and even rumors about Tony Gonzalez being traded? I mean, seriously. I mean, at that age, I mean, you know, how can he get traded at that age? But Atlanta, they, they probably really come from, uh, seem like to me, the coaching staff. I mean, they got great players, but they don't they don't play together. So that's a uh, coaching staff problem right there to get those guys to play together. But uh, as far as uh, Carolina, I think they got the one of the best front four in football, and I think that's going to take them a long way. So that's the team you're going to have to reckon with. Yeah. Hey, of course, Tampa. Tampa, you, you talk about a team that's in disarray. Tampa, with their coaching and their GM, they have a lot of problems going on over there right now. I think they're spreading a lot of blame of why the season is the way it is, and they have this disease that's going into different players and whatnot. They have a lot they have to clean up. I think they're going to be in a rebuilding mode, basically probably from the top, starting from the top, from the GM on down. Might a long way to go, but the Saints are going to have to beat Seattle, and they're going to have to beat San Francisco, who physically beat them last year. So to me, it's all about those teams, and by losing, you played yourself a game back to San Francisco and to being even with Seattle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, you know, like we've talked about, Kenny, they, they face a four-game stretch here after Buffalo and the Jets. And to me, that's going to be where their season has been, is going to determine whether or not they are true an NFC home field advantage or get one of those buys. I'm penciling them into the playoffs, okay? I don't think I'm going out on a limb. But, you know, they're a good enough team. But that four-game stretch, San Francisco, Dallas, Seattle, and Atlanta, mm -hmm. That's that'll be where it determines. Yeah. Man, you know, man in the Super Bowl and stuff. I know that, you know, when the season over with, everybody starts fresh. So all those teams make the playoff and start fresh. The teams can get hot, can go all the way. So the Saints in great position. They really are in great shape, and I think that going forward, this is exactly where you hoped you would be. Five and one going to the break. They are, and now they simply have to come out of it and play good football. We'll take a time out here when we return. Did the Saints lose the game, or did the Patriots win the game? Our hot seat segment is next on Sports Nova TV. iSportsNola.com trivia question for this evening. With Sunday's game in New England, Drew Brees has now quarterbacked the Saints in 30 of the 31 NFL stadiums. What is the only NFL city the Saints have not played in since Breeze arrived in 2006. Answer is an ironic one. Breeze, former city of San Diego. Remember, the Saints played the Chargers in London back in 2008, so no road game there of sorts. An extended road game, but they didn't play in San Diego, so Breeze has never had the opportunity to go home again, as it were, to play against the Chargers. Ken Trahan, Sports NOLA TV from TGI Fridays in Metairie. It is time now for our hot seat segment. And our hot seat segment, as always, is brought to you by Pride Services AC and Heating. 
Pride Services handles all your AC and heating needs. Since 1984, Pride Services skilled technicians have served and repaired all brands and models. They never charge for on-site estimates and pride themselves on fast, reliable service. Get out of the hot seat and call Pride Services. Pride Services will fix it right today. Be here tomorrow since 1984. Very tough loss for the New Orleans Saints at Gillette Stadium. And our topic is very simply this. Did the Patriots win the game or did the Saints lose the game? As we know, in the general consensus of what really happened, both are true, but which one is more accurate in the opinion of Brian Alley Walsh? Brian? Thank you, Doctor. Uh, it's simple. It's simple to me. The Saints lost this game, and I'll tell you why. For an organization and a coaching staff that prides itself on situational football, this was the, the perfect blueprint for success to do the proper things in the four minute and in the two minute and they did neither. Uh, you could make cases for poor clock management by the sideline, Sean Payton specifically, but they had the game in control. They, New England was running out of timeouts. I thought the third down pass to Marcus Colson, which extended the, the clock for New England was a bad decision. I thought uh, Keenan Lewis's decision to fling uh, Dobson out, uh, out of bounds to kill the clock also was a bad decision. Those are the kind of decisions that this is a regular season game. You make that in the playoffs and you're out. And that's why I think the Saints lost it. They were in control. At this point, your enemy, the team that you're, you're the thing that you're trying to do is beat the clock. That's the enemy, not the team, and they didn't do a good job of that. Oh, well, you see the cup half empty, I see it half full. I say New England. I say I think they came and they won the game. I think it was because of them. They stepped up and made plays when needed. They took advantage of opportunities when needed. You said that both teams, they, they pride themselves on situations, being, being very situational teams, and I think New England did that. Both great teams, great teams take advantage of, of, of mistakes of an opponent. That's what New England did. You gotta understand, you had guys dropping balls all game, but when it was time to make a play, they all stepped up and made plays. And it was led by who? Their leader, Tom Brady. Took him down the field. Out the throwing the interception just before that, when we thought the game was over with, he comes back, no time left, uh, uh, no timeouts, a few minutes left on the clock, and drive his team down in a couple of throws. I thought it was a classic uh, Tom Brady. I thought it was classic New England Patriots. I thought it was a classic uh, Bill Belichick. That's what they've been doing for a while. Had it been something new, maybe I would have gave it to the Saints. But this is something that's been continued in a pattern throughout New England Patriots, um, uh, their dynasty over the last few years. This is nothing new. Shouldn't be a surprise. They've been doing it, and I believe they'll continue to do it as long as Tom Brady is back there. Well, see, they won the game. I mean, you can second guess and be a uh, Monday quarterback. You know, a lot of people be Monday quarterback. But I would have made the same decision as Coach made. I mean, you know, we're looking to get for, uh, completion there and we didn't get the completion and that would have killed the ball game. But really New England had a uh, pretty near gave the ball game away. They pretty near quit. They got a second chance and like Terrence say, anytime you get Tom Brady a second chance down with two minutes left, he be, you know, he, he been getting the job done. So, you know, he's a good comeback quarterback and he got a chance to beat us at the end. Are you done former players? <laughs> you you have you I have brought you into my weave, my web here. Listen. If you, you have stated my case, Torrance, in that you know it's Tom Brady. You know it's Bill Belichick. Okay. Excellent coach, excellent okay. football player. You cannot give them that kind of time on the clock to do what they do best. And the Saints could, could have controlled the clock much better. They're as good playing situational football as the New England Patriots, Patriots are. Sean Payton is as good an offensive strategist as there is in the game. Okay, and they did a. I thought they did a poor job of protecting their lead and draining the clock. But you hollered you, 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 you Belichick. Belichick yes. don't have nothing to do with the offense. When Tom Brady go down and score to win the drive, Belichick ain't got nothing to do with it. So, don't call Belichick. Name he's a off, situational but, but, but football coach. He don't have nothing to do with the I didn't say he did. No, but you say but, Tom Brady and Belichick. Belichick got nothing to do with them going to win the game. He's a situational coach. He just like Sean Payton is a good coach. 
Mm -hmm. Bill Belichick is a great yeah, coach defense. too. Is that, defense. That's fine. Right. I'm not saying still, that. Right. The, whole, the point is, is that they didn't do a good job of okay. protecting the lead and and milking the clock. But, but, we, just, we, could keep, but, but we, we could keep talking about the coaches and all. The and players, still be wrong. But, but the players still have to go out there play right. and absolutely. Right. And the, the Patriots went out and executed. The, uh, the Saints did. They got the ball last. Is that and the last and, and, team? The last team, team and they won. So they won. Order in the corner. Order in the corner. Order in the corner. I'll hold you in contempt. Hey, hey. <laughs> last one. <laughs> Both are true. Saints lost the game. Patriots won the game. But the Saints have this game under control. It's more the Saints losing this game than the Patriots winning this game. There's no doubt about that. The Saints gave this game away in every conceivable way that you possibly can. All you need to do is look at the facts of this game. I have no problem with the play call to throw the ball on third down for Marcus Colston. I have a problem with Drew Brees throwing that ball. If it's not there, simply take a sack or run the ball and kick the field goal. Why would you throw an impossible pass to complete in the double coverage down the sideline and stop the clock when they can't stop the clock? It makes no sense at all. I have no problem with the other play call. I love the bootleg call. It wasn't there. Somebody stayed home. Great play. Nothing wrong with the call. The Patriots did make a play there, but the Patriots made no plays. They dropped the ball all over the place. Brady throws an interception. They had two chances to win this game and did absolutely nothing, only because the Saints did a poor job of managing the clock and a poor job of executing did the Patriots get a reprieve. And if you give Tom Brady a third chance, Goodness gracious, he'll get it done. But I can think of a lot of quarterbacks, if you give them three chances, they're going to get it done. Keenan Lewis, how can you not keep the receiver in bounds? So many chances, Saints lost the game. We'll take a timeout. We'll take a look at college football when we return in just a moment. And Sports NOLA TV continues from TGI Fridays. The Saints nearly made it another perfect weekend. What a great Saturday it was prior to Sunday and the difficult loss that the Saints had because LSU and Tulane came through in a big way. First of all, the Tigers taking on the Florida Gators at Tiger Stadium. Zach Mettenberger had a normal day for a change, but he made enough plays. Beckham shakes a tackle, gets down the field, nice cutback. Florida's got a great defense. LSU knew they'd be challenged. J.C. Copeland puts it in the end zone. LSU won this game up front, Brian. They won the game up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Absolutely, and for the first time in, in a while, look, the defense did a great job. They dominated this game. Mettenberger looked very pedestrian. They did a good job with the wide receivers. Running game was there, but overall, the defense give them the W in this game. Well, it's just good to see, Torrance, when your offensive line like that can control play and your defensive line can control play. Your special teams were good enough as well. This was a, a complete effort, and it came from other areas other than their passing game. Uh, yeah, uh, you like to see wins like this because they're, they're all not going to be blowouts, and you're going to have to fight sometimes. You're going to have to struggle sometimes, and I just, I'm glad to see a win like this from uh, um, LSU because later on in the season, I think the game's going to get tougher, definitely when you're talking about bowl games. Jeremy Hill looks like an NFL running back, Ricky, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he does good. I mean, they got a lot of good running backs on their team. But I was more impressed with the offensive line. Those guys really did some great run blocking. I've seen how the center and the guard, they uh, fired off the ball, and they were making the uh, defense uh, move back. So I really was impressed with the offensive line. I was impressed with Les Miles' post-game press conference where, believe me, LSU was the hammer and not the nail. Remember that. This time around. <laughs> this time around. It was classic. That's it's all you good. Seen it too? Get two, it up. Two it's, teams competing. Oh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. wonderful. And Ricky, Ricky's right. This offensive line is is probably the most talented, most athletic they've had in a long time. They got some future NFL players, which is not something we could say in recent years at LSU. And I think that was a large reason they won this game. Kudos to the defense for stepping up. Much bigger test against the spread offensive Ole Miss this coming weekend with others to come. 
Meanwhile, in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, Tulane took a gigantic step forward in its quest, not only to make a bowl game, but to possibly win Conference USA. Derek Strozier, Defensive Player of the Week, Conference USA. Devin Powell, Offensive Player of the Week. Cairo Santos, Special Teams Player of the Week. They just got it done in all phases. And Brian, they won this game without their quarterback. Absolutely. Kevin White played well for a redshirt freshman step in. His two touchdown passes came in the overtime period. And I'll tell you what, Derek Strozer, all he is is a scoring machine. He returned a, a blocked field goal for a touchdown last week. And now he returns a pick 99 yards for a touchdown. So I'll tell you what, Kenny, we've said this. Curtis Johnson, keep up the great work. And I love the decision by Johnson here after they yeah. missed in uh, triple overtime to not waste any time, Torrance. They just put yeah. the best kicker in the country on the field, said let's win it here, and Cairo Santos did. Give, give him opportunity. Again, best kicker in the country. Give him opportunity. He went out. He won the ball game. Great. Can we say r &L carry at least right now as a bowl game? Yeah, at least. <laughs> I think it's going to get better. 36-33 final. Ricky, you win with your backup quarterback. That speaks volumes about Curtis Johnson's team. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's a great uh, prospect coming in. They had high hopes on him, so they knew he was a good quarterback. I mean, they just didn't know they would have to use him. Kenny, I, I want to say this might be the best BCS team, bowl championship series team that nobody has really seen. It's, it's, it's pathetic that the crowds that are going to this. This is a good football team. You've got a new stadium coming in next year. Go out and support this team because it's a, it's a bowl-ready team. Well, it really is. I mean, it's a team that has earned respect. It's a team that, by beating East Carolina, beat a legitimate team, a team that had whipped North Carolina badly, and a team that is clearly looking like the class of Conference USA until this game. So now Tulane gets a week off before Tulsa comes in. This Tulsa team is a team that has just absolutely hammered Tulane for many years, but they're not anywhere near as good as they've been in recent years, and this will be a great opportunity for Tulane. Nick Montana will be back at quarterback. He will remain the starter. You don't lose your job getting hurt, and he's their best option, and they should heal up to be ready for that game. So great stuff for Tulane, and no doubt that they have aspirations for even bigger things than perhaps the Arno Carriers New Orleans Bowl. High school football continues at a premium, and it's time to announce our SportsNola.com, WGSO 990 AM, and New Orleans Quarterback Club Prep Player of the Week. He's quarterback Ryan O'Krupke of St. Paul's High School at Mandeville. He was actually 19 of 22 after the official numbers were turned in for 198 yards, three touchdowns. He also rushed six times for 52 yards as St. Paul's beat Mandeville 20 to three. And that performance was overshadowed by an incident on a sideline, which uh, really was ridiculous and needs to be addressed and will be addressed. But on the field, it's all about the kids and playing the game. You know, Krepke had a big game. When you complete all but three passes, you've done an awfully good job against a really good opponent in Mandeville that's made the state semifinals two straight years, Brian. Kenny, you guys got such a hard job picking the player of the week each week because, you know, the, the, Jackson for St. Aug, you've got uh, 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 Gravelly from Holy Cross. I mean, there's some really great candidates each and every week. Well, we yeah. also balance it because we try not to duplicate schools yeah, sure. as much as possible. We want to try to spread the wealth as much sure. as possible. And to pick one guy is virtually impossible. You're right. Yeah. But this was an instance where a young man played extremely well against a big-time team in a big-time rivalry game. Absolutely. So, obviously, that's why we felt the way we did. Of course, our first NBC Bank Prep Showcase continued this past Friday night with a great American rivalry, Holy Cross and Jesuit. If you haven't been to one of these, you've missed a lot. Over 10,000 fans on hand, live on WHNO Channel 20, live at SportsNola.com, Tag Gormley Stadium historic site of so many of these battles over the years. And this was a great game from start to finish. James Tabry, Michael Chigbu, what a big time receiver he is, just a junior, big, fast, and he is the apple of the eye of many recruiters. Tabry, a very good quarterback. Jesuit didn't quit, though. McMahon into the end zone. Tie the game late to give themselves a chance at 13-13. Sets the stage for uh, a game-winning drive. Reed Gravelay will knock it through for Holy Cross. And Gravelay had to do it twice. They iced the kicker once, and he had to come back and do it again. And he did. Ron Bricado says hello, guys. And Holy <laughs> Cross wins at 16-13. Snap a five-game losing streak. Here come the students. A five-game losing streak at the hands of Jesuit. That's how big this game is, guys. Wow. And that's what makes high school football uh, so good. Over 10,000 people there, Brian. Big time scene. Boy, I tell you what, you're right. And, and to have the fans storm the field like that, like you said, Kenny, that, that's outstanding. That's great. That's really good stuff. And, Ricky, mm -hmm. you played in a lot of great high school games. 
You ever play in a setting like that? Oh, yeah, I mean, we play against Blade Central. That's our arch rival. We have like 15,000 there uh, every Friday night for Monk Bowl. So it's just great to have uh, good high school football. You know what a the fitting Monk ending Bowl. to win on the last play of the game. Yeah. On the field oh, that's, that's, that, that's what you like. I've been going to some of these high school football games, and they have been great. If you haven't had an opportunity to get out on a Friday or a Saturday to see high school football in Louisiana, you need to get out here. This weekend, it's double your pleasure, double your fun. We've got two rivalry games to show you as part of the first NBC prep showcase this weekend. And these are two big time Catholic League battles, Holy Cross and Brother Martin, neighborhood rivalry. They'll get on at noon Saturday on WHNO. And then a, a monster game between St. Augustine and defending state champion Archbishop Rummel, which will be shown at 6.30 p.m. on WHNO. Of course, you can watch them both live at sportsnola.com. Great games to watch. No doubt you'll want to be there. We appreciate First NBC Bank and Ashton Ryan and Ed Marshall and Lou Bolero, the entire crew, for making all this possible for us to bring you the best of high school football. We'll take a time out here. When we come back, we'll talk about what's to come with your New Orleans Saints as Sports Noah TV continues from TGI Fridays in Metairie. Here at TGI Fridays in Metairie, where variety is the spice of life, and TGI Fridays has variety covered. Two locations, Metairie on Veterans Boulevard, across the river on Manhattan. Great food. Come out to TGI Fridays. Great lunch specials, great place. Watch some football. TGI Fridays, where in here, it's always Friday. And Trey Hand Sports, NOAA TV, the Saints have a bye week, and then it's Back to action against Buffalo, and let's take a look at the upcoming New Orleans Saints schedule. We mentioned the Buffalo Bills coming to town. Then it's at the Jets, and then the Cowboys coming to town. And Brian, as we talked about, uh, these are three games that, frankly, they need to win them all before they hit that tough stretch. Absolutely, and uh, you know, he's going to give them the week off like they've done in the past. Good note to, to uh, keep in mind is that after starting 0-3 after bye games, after bye weeks yeah. under Sean Payton, they've won their last four. And you expect Drew Brees to bounce back and play better. Oh, yes, especially after a week off, and hopefully we can get Jimmy Graham, get him healthy. We don't know the extent to his injury, but hopefully we can get him back healthy and get some other guys with these nicks and bruises out of the way so we can come back and play some ball. And opposing defenses have a game plan for the Saints now off of that Patriots game, Rick? Oh, really, I mean, you know, coming in the Superdome, Saints going to be the Saints. we got the best team, best offense. Every now and then, you know, you're going to struggle a little bit, but we still have the best offense. So bottom line is the Saints have it in their hands, and they'll be favored, by the way, I'm sure, in all three of those games, even the road game against the Jets. So, again, that's the key in the NFL. Win the games you're supposed to win. Steal one or two that you're not supposed to win. And if you do, you'll end up in a great place. Gentlemen, as always, it's been a pleasure. Torrance, thank you. Oh, it's been great, great to have you with us. Mr. Walsh, a pleasure. Yes, the Hall of Famer, thank you. Great. And we want to thank everyone else, including Andrew and Adam and Lenny and the entire crew for a job well done. And remind you, we'll be back next week at the same time at 6 p.m. with Sports NOLA TV. Until then, now this is Ken Trahan saying thanks for joining us and be a good sport. God bless you one and all. We are rounding third and heading home. So long.